Kentucky Ancestors Town Hall was filmed at the headquarters of the Kentucky Historical Society. Join us as we reveal Kentucky family mysteries, share tips from our experts, and learn about Kentucky history. Telling Kentucky's story, one family at a time. Welcome, one and all, to the Kentucky Ancestors Town Hall. I'm Renee Shaw, delighted to be here today. We are going to take a look in the next half hour at a fascinating Kentucky story that's about money, slander, a family feud, and the Civil War. And here to help us with this all is Tamala Biggs. Welcome, Tamala. And you're no stranger to the Kentucky Historical Society because you volunteer here. Yes. So what do you do here when you volunteer? Uh, well, for the last five years, I've been course marshal behind Buffalo Trace during the half marathon. So when they're cooking mash, that's a lovely place to be. Uh huh. Um, I volunteered for this the last two years right. and worked the table out front. And then um, over the few years, I have helped catalog books upstairs. Questions would come in about um, things that have happened in the past, and I've looked at newspaper articles on microfilm and helped answer questions and get information out to people who were looking for information about their ancestors. Right, so it's, it's a point to our audience members. You could be sitting there this time, and the next year you could be sitting right here. Something to look forward to. Well, thank you, Tamla. So tell us about where you're from and your family's Kentucky connections. Okay, I was born in Henderson County. My father was born in Henderson County, but my mother's family is from Livingston and Marshall County. Um, but this branch of the family was from Ohio County, and this mm -hmm. is my great-great-great-grandfather, Granville Crawford, which is as far back as I've been able to go on my mother's side right. of the paternal uh, line. Um, his children lived in Ohio County until my great-grandfather moved to Livingston County, and my mother was born in Smithland, was raised there. Met my father on a blind date hmm. uh, with my father's twin brother, and her sister was on a blind date with my dad. They oh, didn't wow. like their respective dates they <laughs> traded. <laughs> my aunt told my uncle never to come back. He married my Aunt Lola. That's a whole other story. Wow. And my parents have been married since 1953. Yes, and they're still alive and doing quite well. So yes. we're glad. And a colorful history has already unfolded. <laughs> and there's more to this story. So it turns out that Granville Crawford played a role in a fascinating legal drama. And you're a lawyer, so you're all about this kind of stuff. And our researchers were unable to uncover some information that's probably new to you. Are you ready to learn more? Yes. About your great, great, great grandfather and the times he lived in. So one key fact that's come down to you all over these years is that in 1877, Granville Crawford, your great, great, great grandfather, walked 11 miles from his home in Sulphur Springs in Ohio County to the county seat, Hartford. Now, as you know, he made the trip to testify in a court case. Now let's share with our audience the background for this story. Ohio County is the coal country region of Western Kentucky. In 1798, when it was first laid out, it stretched all the way to the Ohio River, which gave it its name. It saw some action in the Civil War when Confederate cavalry burned the courthouse, which was being used as barracks for Union soldiers. By 1877, the county was home to about 20,000 people and, quote, a few sore heads. <laughs> and so you'll see, welcome to Hartford, Kentucky, <laughs> home of some happy people and a few sore heads. <laughs> so Granville Crawford lived near Sulphur Springs. Today, there are just a few houses there scattered along Kentucky Highway 69, as you probably know. But in Granville's day, it was a bustling community with its own post office and a bona fide tourist attraction that was a sulfur well. Ooh. <laughs> there were several of these in Kentucky, wells or springs where the water was rich in minerals like sulfur, magnesium, and iron. And in the 19th century, people believed water like that had these healing properties, and they drank and bathed in it to cure all kinds of ailments. So two prominent families lived in the Sulphur Springs community, the Beans and the Cannons. Lennon and Sarah Boswell Bean came to Ohio County from Maryland around 1811. Leonard was an influential leader in the Methodist Church and made a fortune in livestock, land, and finance. Now, sometime before 1870, his daughter, Polly, married your ancestor, Granville 
Crawford. Now, the 1870 census tells us that Granville, born in 1805, was living with his wife on a farm and that their assets were valued at about $2,000. With them at home were four children, Samuel C., age 33, Gabriel, age 15, Zelme, age 13, and interestingly enough, another Samuel C., age 14. Now, records indicate that Granville and Polly had not fewer than 14 children in all, but that only seven really lived to adulthood. Now, you remember we mentioned the Cannon family. They had an in-law connection to Granville. Polly, Granville's wife, had a niece named Mary Bean. She married Jeremiah, or who they called J.B. Cannon. The Cannon family owned a hotel and at least one business in Sulphur Springs and had come there from Mercer County in the early 1800s. So far, so good. There's a lot of names, a lot of characters, and we're going to introduce yet another character to this story.